hey guys a very good evening to all of you so in this particular video we are going to talk about nmr spectroscopy how to solve questions or how to attempt questions from nmr spectroscopy or basically you can say pinning down nmr spectroscopy especially the multiple choice questions right where the proton nmr data is given to you be it from any entrance exam csi net gate or any other university entrance exam as well you can do any question uh, from nmr spectroscopy just with the help of proton nmr data you might have seen questions um at different levels where uh, they are basically talking about 13c nmr data also proton nmr data also is given to you ir stretching frequency is given to you mass spectra is given to you but you are still uh, you know you get confused and you don't know how to use the data so you don't need or you don't require all that data we'll just go through the four key points and then we'll solve certain previous year questions so that things get clearer okay so let's discuss the four key points quickly right and then we'll see how to execute these four key points so check out the options and note down the key structural differences this is the point number 1 okay check out the options and note down the key structural differences what do students do generally they look at the data the chemical shift data the ir stretching frequency data and then they look at the options now that is where the first step itself what you are doing is wrong whenever we are doing questions related to structural elucidation the first thing that you need to see is the key key structural differences between the four options that is given to you that is the first point that i am quite sure many of you are missing out okay then take uh, then once that is done once you have noted down the key structural differences then take help of proton nmr alone to eliminate as many options as possible you can definitely for sure in each and every question el eliminate at least two options using the proton nmr data in most of the questions i am telling you you can actually do the question just with the help of proton nmr data even if ir data is given to you and mass data is given to you or 13c data is given to you you don't need to go to these data first you need to see the proton nmr data the question will definitely get solved in most of the cases only with the help of your proton nmr data in case it is not getting solved then you go to ir or 13c data okay and ir is more important ir will give you much more information about the molecule than the 13c not in the live scenario not in the research scenario in the research scenario 13c gives much more information but in 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 theoretically when you are talking about the questions the ir data gives us quite a lot of information right so these are the four key points you need to remember the first point is i'll star market is the most important check out the options and note down the key structural differences okay so um again these are few other uh, key points that splitting pattern always gives you the highest amount of information the most information about the structure of the molecule right the splitting pattern like whether it's a triplet whether it's a quartet whether it's a doublet of double, doublet whether it's a quintet you know whether it's a septet so it, splitting pattern gives you a lot of information about the structure of the molecule so always try and go for the splitting molecule uh, spl uh, the splitting pattern of the molecule and then you can take the help of your chemical shift and the coupling constant and the integration integration basically means that um how many protons are there in the molecule right sometimes you will also be given the proton data as in two hydrogens or three hydrogens right so that is what it means so we'll do uh, a question this is a classic question from december 2014 and uh, the question says that an organic compound having molecular formula c10h12o2 so you generally don't need to check out the molecular formula because in most of the cases the molecular formula is going to be the, going to be correct only they are not going to give you such a silly question where the molecular formula is different than the options right so it is not going to happen and the ir stretching frequency over here is given to you but i told you we can have uh, we can solve this question only with the help of proton nmr data or 1h nmr right so this is this uh, like i have written it's a classic example of solving 1h nmr data alone so now let us look at the four structures now if you see the four structures the first difference that would come to your mind is that all of them okay uh, maybe this particular this d molecule might be hidden because of my um video coming over here but this is nothing but i'll just draw it over here this is nothing but this molecule right this oxygen and then we have this so the fourth option is nothing the part which is hidden is this o ch2 double bond, like o and then we have a double bond and then methyl okay so uh, um that is it now if you see the um four four structures now you can see this this molecule over here this mole the fourth option is also trans in nature the third option is also trans the first option is also trans so you can see option number a option number b and option number d are trans in nature okay sorry option number a option number c and option number d are trans whereas option number b is cis so now you have found out the key structural differences three are three are trans and one is cis 
So now what you do? You look at the um, proton lemma data, which tells you whether the protons are cis or trans. So over here you see that the J value over here, you can see over here, the J value is given to us as 18 and 6. Okay, that means 18 hertz and 6 hertz. J value basically corresponds to the coupling constant. And uh, over here also you see J value is equal to 18 hertz. So this high J value is only seen for trans coupling. Okay, for cis coupling, you see a value between 6 to 12 hertz. I'll write down over here. For cis coupling, you see a, uh, between 6 to 12 hertz. Okay, but for trans coupling, you see from 12 to 18 hertz. So this high coupling constant is only seen for trans alkenes, not for cis alkenes, right? So from here, you have elucidated that it's a trans alkene. So you can eliminate option number two. So we eliminated option number two. Now we have to go with option number A, C and D. Now, what is the key structural difference between A, C and D? If you see this one over here, option number A and option number C has this OME group. Okay, option number A has OME and option number C also has OME group. So both of them have OME. Whereas if you see option number D, option number D does not have a OME group. Instead, it has a simple ME group, right? And this OME in option number A and this OME in option number C, okay? And this methyl group in option number D, okay? All, are, all will be singlets because there's no proton to split them. So we will see in the proton animal data where a singlet is given to us. So if you see over here, this is 3.8, 3H singlet. So 3.8. So this refers to the, this 3.8 refers to which proton? The methyl proton. Okay. There is another 3H which is given to us as 1.85, but it is a doublet. This uh, one, the, the one at 1.85 is given to us as doublet. Okay, it is given to us as doublet. So that means it's given to us as doublet. Why is it given to us as doublet? Because this hydrogen is splitting this methyl, the three protons of the methyl into doublet. So we are talking about this methyl. So 1.85, the data given to us at 1.85 corresponds to this methyl or this methyl or this methyl. When we talk about the methyl over here, the one I've highlighted over here, this one in the fourth option and this OME in the third option and this OME in the first option. These basically correspond to singlets. And it is given to us as a value of 3.8. Now remember, whenever a methyl proton is attached to electronegative atom like oxygen, the range of this uh, methyl ranges from 3.5 to 4.5. This is very important. It comes in each and every CSI net exam or be it any entrance exam. You will see a lot of questions based where the methyl protons are attached to oxygen. So remember their range, it is from 3.5 to 4.5 general range. It can go above also in some cases where the where a lot of electronegative atoms are attached around it. But the general range is 3.5 to 4.5. So this one clearly is 3.8. So that means it corresponds to the OME protons. So it could be either option number A or option number C, right? So over here also I have written in A and B. Uh, okay, so B we have already eliminated, right? B we have already eliminated. So in A and C option, okay? So I would say in A and C, not A and B. In A and C, OME present, which is absent in D. There's no ME in D. So chemical shift at 3.8, which shows presence of OME. So we can eliminate D. So we have eliminated D and we have eliminated B. Now, what is the difference between A and C? Now you have to look at the difference between A and C. And there's a very clear difference between option number A and C. Because if you see option number C uh, and option number A, this hydrogen, uh, I'll change the color so that it is easier for you to see. Just wait one second. Let me change the color. I'll change the color of the ink. I'll change it to blue so that you can see it clearly. Okay. So I'm talking about this hydrogen over here. Um, sorry. Uh, just one second. Some problem. All right. So again, it is red in color. I don't know what is happening. Just give me one second. This is the first time I'm trying it out. So it might be a little difficult for me. Yeah. So this hydrogen I'm talking about this hydrogen, right? You can see over here, this hydrogen does not have any proton ortho to it, right? This hydrogen does not have any proton ortho to it. But if you see over here, there are three hydrogens and all three hydrogens, hydrogens are adjacent to each other. Now you check the, uh, the splitting pattern of the aromatic protons. So if you see the aromatic region, the aromatic region is basically this 6.75, 6.8 and 6.9 because we have already identified that 6.0 and 6.28 are the are the uh, sp2 hybrids or alkene protons, not sp2 hybrids, alkene protons. So 6.0 and 6.28 are alkene protons. 5.0 basically corresponds to OH protons since it's written to us as D2O exchangeable. 
D2 O exchangeable means they are very acidic protons and D2 O exchangeable protons generally OH protons, right? So 5.0 corresponds to OH protons, 3.8 we have already identified as OME and 1.85 we have identified as the uh, methyl, the methyl which is attached to the alkene, okay? Now, in option number A and C, you can see that the splitting pattern will definitely be different. So if you check out the aromatic proton, 6.75, it is given to us as doublet, right? It is given to us as doublet. Then 6.8 is given to us as singlet and 6.9 is again given to us as doublet. So there is one singlet and in no case in option number C can we have a singlet because all the three protons are adjacent to each other. So they will definitely split each other. Whereas in option number A, we can see that the hydrogen that I have highlighted, this will show a singlet. Whereas these two hydrogens, the ones over here, will show, will split each other and show doublets. So that is why just only the condition that is satisfied by the proton NMR data given to us is by option number A. So the correct answer for this case is option number A. And that's how just with the help of proton NMR data alone, you could you can solve such questions. And this was asked for four marks in December 2014. Now the thing is, uh, what did I use? First, I saw the differences. Okay, I'll repeat again. I'll summarize it. First, I saw the difference. That what is the difference in the structure of the four compounds? The first difference I found immediately was that three are trans, one is cis. So I, immediately, I went to the alkene protons. I, immediately, I went went to the alkene protons and show, uh, saw the coupling constant. For uh, trans alkenes, I know that the coupling constant is between 12 to 18 hertz. I saw the uh, coupling constant. It was 18 hertz. So from there, I identified um, that it was basically your trans alkene right then the next difference i saw was that in two of these structures in option a and c it was ome group was present and in option number d only me group was present so i thought that the singlet proton with three hydrogens so singlet proton with three hydrogens i identified sorry the singlet proton with three hydrogens i identified had the chemical shift of 3.8 from there i got the idea that it cannot be option number d because option number d has only a methyl proton whereas option number a and c have methoxy groups then i checked the difference between a and c in a and c i found a very clear difference that there must be a big difference in the splitting pattern of the aromatic protons because one of the aromatic protons will definitely come as singlet in option number a whereas in option number c all will show a splitting pattern right there will there will be no proton with a singlet so when i looked up at the aromatic protons i found that one aromatic proton was indeed singlet so that basically gave me the idea that the answer is option number a so this is the correct way by which you can approach a nmr question now there are many other questions uh, which are we will practice together through which you will be able to answer such questions right but that practice questions um are basically uh, i'll be taking a free lesson on an academy tomorrow from eight o'clock to nine o'clock live lesson okay it will be a live lesson so i can you know take your doubts because right now i don't know whether i'm going fast or i'm going slow or whether you are able to understand or not right plus i don't have the um i don't have the what do you call uh, the technology uh, to have a better software or a better platform through which i can you know uh, make you understand this particular question uh, because uh, you know you can see how hodgepodge it has become so over there the platform is much more simpler and is, it is most of all first of all it's a free lesson okay you can register for free there is no cost at all no hidden cost nothing uh, okay i'm not like those educators where i'll show you half of the um, you know video over here and then i'll tell you to pay half for the rest half of the video i'm not going to do that so i it's going to be uh it's going to be uh, let me show you uh yeah so it's going to be a one hour lesson okay it's going to be a one hour lesson and uh, the lesson is going to be free of cost from 8 to 9 pm tomorrow okay 8 to 9 pm tomorrow so you can go there and it's a live lesson so you can actually ask me doubts right then and there right and i'll give you the link to the um uh, to the registration link you can just register for free and you can watch that um nmr video later if you like this video right so this is how we are going to do we are going to solve each and every question uh, using the four key points that I had mentioned, right? So anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Do not forget to register for the course and come tomorrow from 8 to 9 p.m. live and you can ask me your doubts because I feel that I'm going a little too fast over here. Over there, we'll have plenty of time so we can discuss. And um, yeah, that's it. If you haven't still subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you could guys, please subscribe to my channel as well. That's it. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.